come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast where every Saturday we get together, watch a movie, and then talk about it ad nauseum for your listening pleasure and education. There's going to be a lot of nauseum on this one. (laughs) These are the internet radio superstars who are going to talk about it. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And who picked the movie tonight? Colin. Colin. (laughs) All right, so I chose the 1984 David Lynch movie, Dune. Um, okay, so... Uh, spice. 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 Spice life. We're going to try briefly. Let me say, for those <laughs> briefly, of you who say. haven't seen the movie, I'm going to try and summarize what it's about. We're going to see if I can do it in less than five minutes. Can you even remember names? Strangely enough, I can. But How many I don't, times have you I, seen this movie? Uh, several, and I read the book, so that also. But I mean, like mm-hmm. you know, Game of Thrones, Lord. Well, that's what I'm saying. This I is can, why you love Game of Thrones. I was going to say, yeah. Colin and I this. have had multiple discussions about Game of Thrones, and he's rattling off names, and I'm like, you know, the Night Chick. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I have yeah. no that idea who anyone is. Right? Yeah. 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 the Thrakians and whatnot. See, yeah. I, I have no trouble with Game of Thrones characters ever, but this movie doesn't matter i don't even like <laughs> i just i try and it's no. gone the next scene just no, it's I'm gone like, you know yeah. well, the doctor arrakis <laughs> yeah. harkonians uh Ar- paul Har- harkonans harkonans okay. yeah i <laughs> mean paul paul that's, i think one Remember of the problems one? <laughs> with uh any well i don't know if it's a problem with the story i think a problem with any film adaptation of dune is that it uses a lot of like manufactured language, yes. like mm-hmm. Sardukar and Landsrod and uh, you know Muad'Dib and all this other stuff. Whereas, like comparably, Star Wars uses words like blaster, yes, mm-hmm. uh, lightsaber. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. there's there's Death Star. It's like stuff yeah. that you're yes. like, okay, well, at least these are English words. And I, they have you're just changing the association. I sure, mean, where this is like making stuff up and throwing it at you yeah. like, <laughs> like crazy. All right, so here we go. Dune, for those of you who are new to this, is about a group of warring feudal houses in the future, twenty thousand years in the future. Mm-hmm. Ten thousand one hundred ninety-one. Here we go. That's the yep. that's the year. Here we go. Michaela's got it. <laughs> and they are all battling. Over the uh, uh, substance called the spice, spice. spice, which is manufactured only on one planet, Arrakis. called Arrakis, which is also known as Dune. There you go. <laughs> You're uh, doing way better than I am. <laughs> That's all I got. I'm empty. So the two houses are the House of Trades and House Harkonnen, and they have like this blood feud, and there's a whole bunch of skullduggery and political infighting and betrayal and all this stuff that takes place basically as they try to control this substance spice which basically comes down to the combination of like a hallucinogenic drug and if you take enough of it you become god changes your consciousness and if you I, you know as in the case of the fremen but if you take enough of it over 4000 years you become a space navigator and you are able to fold space and interstellar travel what? is possible <laughs> through use of the spice Ergo, it is the most valuable commodity in the known universe. I didn't okay. get any of that. <laughs> <laughs> what? They like, there's that, narration I, yeah, I got at that. the beginning yeah. that lays this out for okay. <laughs> yeah. Easy enough. <laughs> so Dune started as a 1965 novel by a guy named Frank Herbert. Uh, it is one of the, I mean, the novel is considered one of the titans in science fiction uh, literature, standing alongside... Ender's Game, Mm -hmm. Um, the Fountain, is it the Fountainhead, Isaac Asimov? Oh, I have no idea. No, I don't know. know Battlefield Earth or the Mission Earth series. There are 18 Dune books. (gasps) What? Yeah, that's what I said. (laughs) Only like four to six of those, I can't remember, were written by Frank Herbert. His son's writing the rest. just on the first book? Yes. Or is this, okay, this is just the first book. This is just Dune. But the first book itself is 400 pages. Right. So it's no... It has it's, it's no pamphlet. Yeah. It has a glossary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those where you kind of have to like study to. No, I don't. Yeah, it's like a textbook at that point. Yeah. Cool. 
Now, what? Colin, you have re- you own the book. You've read the book. How Colin does... bought the book in 1984, <laughs> and he right. still has it. I know. I was telling Sean, it's like, but in '84, like I couldn't actually go to. I was a kid, right? I was thinking yeah. ten years old. I couldn't go to see the the movie, but I was I was able to buy the book. <laughs> so I read the did book. You for follow, at 10? Did you follow the book well? Um, it was one of those. I don't know. You read it and you remember certain moments from it, and mm-hmm. all of those moments that I remember are in the movie. Mm-hmm. You know, but I don't know right. if the visual style of the movie has altered the way that I think of it. Because now, mm-hmm. when I think of these scenes from the book, I see right. the, see the designs right. of the yeah. of the film itself. The designs of the film. We should. I mean, we we, could, will, we could speak yeah. at length on that. Like the influence it's apparently had on. Uh, filmmakers later on in life, certain aspects of it. I mean, things I saw right off the bat. I mean, just the uh, obviously the uh, most obvious one is the sandworms, right? Which the prowl the planet, yes. Arrakis. Which I mean, I can we can name uh, tons Beetle of juice. things. Beetlejuice, obviously. Return Tim Burton, of the Jedi. Tim Burton. <laughs> Tim, return, that's what I know. Like Return of the Jedi when he, like I told Colin in the middle of the movie, when the uh, George Lucas went back and redesigned the Sarlacc pit, he adds. A beak to it, and the beak, the thing that comes out of the middle of it, looks just like one of these. It's only mm-hmm. got like two, mm-hmm. uh, an upper and a lower mandible, but like these have three. But it looks just like one of these sandworms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's funny you say that because David Lynch passed up directing Return of the Jedi to make this movie. He was offered, yeah, because mm-hmm. David Lynch had done Eraserhead, mm-hmm. which is you know if you haven't seen Eraserhead, Eraserhead is like. I mean, it's bizarre. It's experimental. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a nightmare kind of caught on film. The only way that I can explain it is like you never meet the person who's dreaming. This right. is their nightmare. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then he did a dramatic feature called The Elephant Man, which is mm-hmm. a really good movie with Fantastic. John Hurt, who just passed away recently. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And this, I think, was his opportunity to graduate into like big budget mainstream mm-hmm. movie making. And the only problem is you're David Lynch. And so there's no way that's ever going <laughs> to happen. Right. Or David Lynch. <laughs> yeah. And this is Dune. <laughs> yeah. At some point, this is going to be inaccessible to people. Yeah. Man, can you imagine there's a parallel universe out there, though, where David Lynch directed Return of the Jedi? Like yeah. I want to see that movie. Oh my yeah, God. a lot of uh, dissolves. He's like, I want to change yeah. everything. This will have yeah. a great meaning because that's the thing. I don't think like there there is that uh, undercurrent in the book of you know like the dreams are guiding Paul. And mm. He takes a lot of, but like the movie, you know that kind of the inner journey and like you know you drink the water, you have an acid trip. There's like this kind of uh, and that imagery is very David Lynchian. I mean, a lot mm-hmm. of the designs and the creatures and stuff like that. The you know ships. They're just odd, mm-hmm. you know, lots of triangular shapes and stuff like this where, you know, it's obviously to me, a director trying to be like, unlike anything else that's been done in science fiction, it's like, I want to do something that's unique. Mm-hmm. Well, it's unique. Does it work? That's maybe another question. <laughs> yeah. David Lynch was not the first guy to try making this movie. And that's actually kind of why I wanted to bring it up. And watch it because um, because it's torrid history. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just been announced that uh, Denny Villeneuve, the director of Arrival and Blade yeah. Runner twenty forty nine, Sicario, this guy is going to try and make Dune, right? Like, uh-huh. so this is his next project. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna try and tackle Dune and all that that entails. Um, so it's like this process is still going on. It's mm-hmm. like they've tried, but they started in the seventies. Um, the Chilean filmmaker, uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky, who like David Lynch started off in, um, like midnight movies. He made a movie called El Topo, which is like this really fucked up surreal. It's fucking awesome. Though. Western. Yeah. And it's cool. And the Holy, the Holy Mountain, Mountain. Yeah. And I like Santa Sangre mm-hmm. also. Yep. These- that whole trilogy is. They're, I mean, they're independent of each other, but like they fit together nicely. Yeah, and mm-hmm. very and like, but he's a surrealist, mm-hmm. right? Oh, it's for sure. So. I mean, Holy Mountain guy like shits in a jar and it turns into gold. Like that's the <laughs> kind of movie he literally gold. shits gold in oh, this yeah. movie. Yeah, it's so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of but, these people but, make a pilgrimage to see. It's very yeah. weird. And you picked this. We could have been watching the shitting gold movie, and you yeah. picked this. <laughs> Well, All right. The door is open yeah. for the future. All Alejandro right. Jodorowsky hasn't been properly enshrined on the Saturday Night Freak Show yet. Not I think El all. Topo might be a better start, though. Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, I want, no I want the shitting <laughs> gold movie. There's weird shit in El Topo. Don't yeah. worry. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. said it was a Western, but there's, that's not entirely. <laughs> oh, there's like a, a like a town of like 
small people that live underground in El Topo uh, that uh-huh. are really disturbing. Yeah. He's very much like, you know, I mean, I guess all surrealists, David Lynch included, it's, you know, a lot of the imagery that seems to appear in their films is motivated by like, you know, it's their own inner life. It is like stuff that he sees in dreams, nightmares, or in his imagination, which is just off kilter. You know, it seems with everything else that mm-hmm. anybody rationally attempts mm. in, a, in a motion picture, but that's kind of what gives him the, but uh, Jodorowsky's version is one of the famous um, what if movies that never happened uh, where he famously was going to cast uh, Orson Welles as Baron Harkonnen. And he was going to have Keith Richards as um, uh, I think Duke Leto. Uh, he was going to have, or no, sorry, as the emperor. I mean, there was like the Pink Floyd mm-hmm. was going to do the music. He got HR Giger to do uh, design work. He got Mobius who did you know, the heavy metal magazine yeah. to do design work. Dan O'Bannon was writing the script. I'd These watch guys. the shit out of this movie. I know, exactly, yeah. yeah. You're but saying all the right words. There's just, a documentary about yeah, how Yeah, Jodorowsky's Dune, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that. there's a beautiful art book, too, where yeah. you can see all the concept art for it. That hmm. It's just, it's absolutely stunning book. Well, because that's his, his, you know, even though he was denied the opportunity, you know, the funding, basically. Cause is I that why? Yeah. People looked at this and was like, A, this is going to be 10 hours long. It's going to be fucking <laughs> weird. I mean, it's it's weirder <laughs> you're than weird. You this is going to be here. weird. <laughs> I mean, when you see some of the art, you're like, I don't know how they would have pulled this off, if, off especially in like 1975 or whenever they were uh, mm-hmm. attempting this. It would have been the biggest sci-fi movie ever made. It would have cost hundreds of millions of dollars in 1975 money. Uh, and so there was just no feasible way, I don't think, to actually pull it off. But he says in his storyboards, you know, basically, if you go look at his in the the, the um, art book, it's everything. He's like, I shot it in my head. It's like, here is mm-hmm. the entire movie of Dune, mm-hmm. you know. Um, uh, Ridley Scott yeah. also was recruited by Dino De Laurentiis to attempt it. Said he went through five drafts, and then uh, he had a death in the family, and so he gave it up. But he ended up being introduced to, through Jodorowsky's project, all the people who then went off to make Alien. Sure. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So that's how like Alien came. I mean, like the the legacy of Jodorowsky's Dune, even though it failed, I think is like one of the things that like you know kind of stretches over mm-hmm. and influenced science fiction movies, yeah, and pop cultures in many ways ever since. And he's I mean, still from, like, he's still rather time. sour about how that all went down too, because like there was even something relatively recently where he said he up until a certain point he had never seen. Um, David Lynch's Dune because he was just like so heartbroken that his movie didn't get made and then he said once he actually watched it he couldn't stop smiling because it was so bad yeah, yeah. and so he was so petty about like it being like, yeah, yes. yeah. So. Well, he was at the time you know the, the heartbreak was doubled because he was like if anybody you know was gonna do it mm-hmm. the worst person to him was like oh no David Lynch, like he would be the guy who, you know, if it would not be better than mine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. And then um, after this movie, which I don't think that it's, uh, that we're, we're spoiling anything to say that in 1984, it was savaged by the critics of the day. Mm-hmm. It, no. uh, I mean, was it a bomb? It cost forty million in uh, in nineteen eighty four dollars. That's the equivalent. adjusted I to. I did 90, it. I did the math. 97, 99, yeah. 99 million. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so this is like a big budget Marvel movie yeah. uh-huh. tanking hard because it only made about thirty million. So that's so. like eighty, yeah. like seventy five, eighty million mm-hmm. on a ninety nine mm-hmm. million dollar budget. Yeah. Mm. In the year two thousand, <laughs> it was attempted for television. Uh-huh. So they made a three part <laughs> miniseries on the Sci Fi Channel. Uh, which is, you know, I suppose more uh, to the letter of the novel in many ways. The design work, to me, looking at it, you know, is kind of not as compelling. It's, you know, very flat, very TV, very claustrophobic. Very mm-hmm. sci-fi yeah. thing. Yeah, very. Mm-hmm. Like, sci-fi they're turning that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, they're going down the hall and turning the corner, but there's nothing beyond that corner. I mm-hmm. know it. Yeah. Stuff I mean, like yeah, that. Even Set like design, when they're outside just, yeah. in the desert, it's like, okay, we got like a patch of, you know, some <laughs> sand and we're shooting it from above. <laughs> Yep. Uh, so you can't yeah. see the edges of it. But what, the, it, they what do the worms look like? They're in a sandbox. <laughs> yeah, they're in a sandbox. I can't even remember if there were CGI in remember. that worms. But uh, William Hurt plays Duke Leto now, and mm-hmm. I think that was their big get. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So um, 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this movie happened. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to us. It happened. Lynch has Never famously forget. like uh, gone on record. Like he doesn't talk about. It. I think like Universal actually came to him and said like you know there's still interest in this movie. It's a cult classic now. Like mm-hmm. we'd like to get you back and like put together your version of it because you know he uh, said uh, that he didn't have final cut. Mm-hmm. So he mm-hmm. was like. I'm distancing myself from this movie. I never want to talk about it again. Um, and he's turned down any offer to come back and revisit it. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though they did put together a two part TV movie using footage that was cut out. And that one's credited to Alan Smithy. Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. So he was like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm done. Huh. I mean, as a career comeback, he had blue velvet, which got him an Academy award nomination for best director. Mm-hmm. So I suppose that's one of the upsides of, like, mm-hmm. if you're going to kill your career with mm-hmm. Dune, you, you know, go Blue Velvet, and then he's just been doing his own stuff ever oh, since. Oh, yeah. He yeah. said he considers this his biggest career failure, and he said it's too painful for him to talk about. Like, he won't even do DVD commentaries. He won't, nothing. Just does wants to pretend like it never happens. So. Yeah. I wonder if you cornered him on the street, though. Would he just shun you, or would he say, thanks for liking that Shout movie? Shout profanities and walk away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. How is he as far as being personable uh, interviews and whatnot? Is he somebody who talks about his stuff? I've never, I can't, I've I've never seen uh, interviews with him or, you know, the movie sites. I've never seen anybody interview him. Like, is he a recluse or is he kind of normal? Because he seems like he'd be an eccentric. Just that's my perception of him. Well, this is your first time ever watching a David Lynch movie, right? It is. It is. it is indeed. I think. Well, I don't know how. I much. still. Yeah, I haven't seen Mulholland Drive. I yeah. Not Blue Velvet. Not Twin Peaks. No, I will not watch Twin Peaks. Why? It just doesn't. I can't. I can't do it. It doesn't look like something that I would want to watch. It's weird. I. I mean, I'm all. I'm all for weird, but it yeah. just doesn't look like. I, there's nothing. Mulholland Drive is the closest one that I've looked at and seen. Like that looks interesting. I want to watch that. But nothing else of his, I can't, uh, there's just no urge to see his stuff. I don't know why. Well, in many ways, it feels like, oh, this is me personally, maybe, mm-hmm. you know, if you've seen a lot of these, McKelly, mm-hmm. you'll disagree. But the uh, Mulholland Drive seems like it is the crystallization of a style or possibly a subject that he's been after, I think, since mm-hmm. Blue Velvet. It's yeah. like there's yeah. Blue Velvet, Wild at Heart, Lost Highway. And, oh, it was, uh, mm-hmm. Fire Walk with Me. So yep. between Inland Peter's Empire? Fire. Inland Empire, that, yeah. That came after Mulholland yeah. Drive. Okay. So mm-hmm. that way, I'm, I'm not counting that one. Because so it's, it's like, it's yeah. before and after <laughs> yeah. at that point? Yeah, I'm like, like I think he changed. nailed it with Mulholland Drive was like, okay, I got it. And then <laughs> I, I lost it. I, I find, I agree, but I find Blue Velvet to be the most accessible of his movies. Mm-hmm. Like, that's my personal favorite. Well, you haven't seen the straight story? <laughs> The G rated oh movie. God. Wait, that's David yeah. Lynch? That's David. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, what? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've seen it? Have you seen a David Lynch movie now? <laughs> no, I have not oh. seen the story. I know the straight story. Yeah. I know the, the story of it and the guy driving across the country in his lawnmower, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. That is the most like linear, like it's a normal linear. movie for a David Lynch. <laughs> linear. You're like, what? Yeah, that's literally on- linear, <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just drive it in a linear line. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's based on a true story, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe that story captured his imagination. <laughs> yeah, I just want to do this. Yeah. Huh. But he comes off, I think, in like interviews and stuff as a very personable kind of yeah. guy. I mean, he's eccentric, yeah, but he has like a he's really like uh, nice and polite and seems like this Midwestern kid who got like transplanted into Hollywood and somehow kept his core by being just like fucking weird, mm-hmm. you know, like <laughs> somehow mm-hmm. that all defended him from losing his, uh, you know, ingrown midwestern values okay. or whatever i don't know you know you have to... whatever makes david lynch david lynch yeah <laughs> okay yeah so if this is your first shot i mean so okay so i guess you know we'd say that the most lynchian thing about since this is somebody else's plot and story yeah would be his visual design. right it'd have to be design and visual oh he's in this movie by the way he was the uh, operator of the uh, harvester who was like oh, on they the rescued radio. oh really yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep. yeah Director cameo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why don't you point that out during the movie? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm pointing it out for the folks at home. 
You're, you know, I was be like, I have to go back. In. I'm not going back. Right. <laughs> but you were going to bring up uh, the creatures or the design. the ship design or oh, I was just it's set design. The set design. Well, I was like you said, the, since it is somebody else's story, the most uh, Lynchian thing is his visuals in this, and I was just commenting on how it looks like it's influenced. Uh, uh, other filmmakers later on in life. That was my big thing. Cause you see it a lot everywhere. I was even, uh, what did I say? Fifth element comes to mind when watching this movie. It's like Luke Besson was a fan of this. Cause some of the, uh, um, the architecture looks the same, especially in the, uh, what's it, the emperor's throne room and whatnot, just the gold and the, uh, um, uh, the, just the angles of everything. Even the suits on some of them look like, if you've ever seen fifth element, it's, uh, um, Oh, which uh, I can't remember any of it now. Like the alien race that's that's holding on to the fifth element at the beginning of the thing. They're like giant robot looking things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That design is like this. It mm-hmm. takes place. I mean, there's a desert planet on there that also looks similar to stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the creature, uh, the creatures in those. That seems like it was heavily influenced by that. Mm-hmm. And then everything that. else being the worms. Yeah. Well, there's so much that Most it notably seems tremors. like, you know, I mean, just off the top of my, you know, it's like if the novel was written, written in 65, I mean, Star Wars takes place where you find the kid on a desert planet. He's yeah. going to become basically the savior of the empire. Yeah. It's an empire. Yeah. Um, there are, um, you know, the Jedi and the Bene Gesserit, you know, I mean, they're kind of, you know, uh, mental uh, magic magicians yeah. kind of, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, there's a lot of parallels, I think. Like, mm-hmm. Even moisture farmers. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> both yeah. movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so there's Star there's Wars some you know I guess you know some threads back to Star Wars. There's a scene in Phantasm. I'm a fan of Phantasm. Mm-hmm. There's a scene where he's got to put his hand in a yep. box, right? Mm-hmm. There's a fear is the mind killer. And yep. Lyrics from uh, songs. Yeah, what was no. the song you guys? Well, was it uh, uh, Daft Punk? No. Uh, what you say? Oh, no. It was Weapon of Choice by Fat, Fat Boy, Boy Slim. Slim. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Use the sample from this or just, or the, just the phrase? The, I think the song's the, inspired by this movie. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, exa- the um, chorus words are Walk Without Rhythm and... Or what was it? What did he say? Uh, something oh, about Don't Bring the Worms. Or, uh, oh, yeah. Walk Without Rhythm and Don't... Uh, Oh, fuck. What you it? had it. I uh, know. I'm drunk. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the drinking started early. The movie's like so long. So long. <laughs> yeah. I don't, watch anyway, that rhythm. Yeah. Don't disturb the worm or something. I don't, yeah. whatever, don't you know, disturb whatever the Whatever they said in the fucking movie. Don't was a drink word the for worm. worm. Don't, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I gotta look it up. God it's, damn it. It's funny what you're saying about the, like, the Emperor's Throne Room because to me, like... Um, this is my first, I haven't seen, I've seen this movie several, several, several times. So this is my first time seeing it in like six or seven years. I was going to say, for someone who, uh, uh, protested that they did not like yeah, this movie, I, it I've seems seen like you've it seen a lot. A lot. Yeah. And, uh, Why? Do people keep making you watch Yeah, this? basically. <laughs> I did. Like, yeah. hates this. <laughs> I, yeah. That's, that's my boyfriend's perspective. She hates it. Let's, Let's watch, watch it. it yeah, exactly. How do you carve out time to sit down and watch this movie? <laughs> and, but the, so this is my first time watching it since like, I've really learned a lot about Scientology mm-hmm. and. And the Emperor's Throne Room looks shockingly a lot like the um, Celebrity Center in L.A. for Scientology. It does. Where they, those videos where you see them putting the weird medals on Tom Cruise and everything's yeah. like all gold. And I was like, oh, God. Like, when I saw it, I almost had a little bit of a reaction this time. I was like, oh, this is really, really upsetting because it parallels something I don't want to think about in our real world. Right, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Sorry. <laughs> Walk with that rhythm. It won't attract the worm. That's what it is. It's mm. literally word for word from this movie. So they, they're they fans of this movie. Yeah. Then. yeah. yeah. yeah I think there's Slim. a lot of, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's probably a Wikipedia page somewhere that, it, you know, lays out like all the connections to, yeah. uh, to Dune and pop culture. But I suppose yeah. that means that there's something to the story. That has this kind of, uh, you know, long reaching appeal. I mean, is it the idea of, I mean, you've got like a messianic character, right? Who is born to royalty, but has to overthrow. I mean, his, Paul's uh, character arc, (laughs) right? Paul. That name is just fucking ridiculous for this movie. Why? Because it's so normal. Yeah. It's gibberish. Yeah. Because he's like, Paul. He's like, blah, 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 blah. And this is my son, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul and Jessica, the most, the two most normal what, words in this Duncan? movie. <laughs> there was a Duncan. There was a Duncan. <laughs> Vladimir. You're making Harkonnen? that one. Harkonnen. Was his name Vladimir? Baron Vladimir uh, Harkonnen. 
Where were you people at? Okay, so know. this maybe maybe it was this, throwing a lot at us, Colin. So this might be the crux of uh, the problem with Dune. Then is that what we're saying? It's the language. The language. It's the language. I mean, it really is because it's not. It's not something you can. Uh, first of all, like you said, they just throw it at you without really context because it is. I mean, which you can get later on in the movie once you meet some of the people they're talking about. But it is just words they're throwing at us and we're like okay what is that what is that you can get kind of the short thread of what is happening but at the beginning it's just words and we're just like okay what do these represent what are what does this mean you say these words but what what am i you know what am i supposed to acknowledge from that and it's again you pick it up later on but at the beginning it's just like woof all right i'm with you keep yeah. going <laughs> How many times did I go, what? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> well, some of that, though, is like, obviously, you walk into a scene. I think uh, the Baron's nephew, Raban, walks into a scene, and they've got, like, a, these people have a cow strung oh, up, uh, you know, and he pulls the tongue out of the cow yeah, and no, starts that, eating that it raw. That yeah. deserved a what? Yeah. Or, uh, you know, the fact that... Uh, what, he starts flying at just some random point. <laughs> yeah, the Baron is yeah. just flying around and pulls out heart plugs and people I was gonna say, after he coats what, himself in what oil the that fuck, rains down from the scene. What scene-? the fuck was that with the slaughtering, uh, like, homoerotically? The that weird one, that rapey slaughter, yeah. 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 Was, what was that? You know, super okay. weird. I don't know. It's a <laughs> planet of I gingers. I don't know that that's in the book. Is that... Some How this, would they even describe that in the book? Well, I think maybe heart, heart plugs, plugs are in the book. It feels like that have to be. Heart yeah. plugs, yeah, but how are they like? And he sauntered over and he, to and he homoerotically like, murdered yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. I can't I don't, even how do you describe that? I don't, even know. I don't even know if the Baron like flies in the book. I mean, maybe <laughs> you know. I, I'd have to go back and look at this. Yeah, I mean, if he sure. doesn't, that was a really good choice. <laughs> Some of this, I wonder if it is David Lynch's. You know, like. That's what he like the grossness of some of this movie. There's people like spitting want, in people's faces. Like yeah. maybe that's just Lynch wanting you to be uncomfortable. Yeah, maybe yeah. like the Baron spittle Harkon. of the Baron. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or even that he had all this shit yeah. on you know the pustules. His diseases. On his yeah. that, they're, it's like they're. Uh, I think the doctor said it like the upkeep on his diseases. It's like they're doing it on purpose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> The milking the cat so in order to, to get the antidote that will cure you. Your, you have to do it every Which day. Which goes you nowhere. They're just like, we brought you a gift. Yeah. yeah. Tis a cat. Milk the cat. With obviously. a rat. Yeah. And who better to bring you a cat to milk than Sting? Than Sting. <laughs> obviously. Ginger yeah. Sting. <laughs> you know, I think the, like, spitting on people and, like, just spit being, like, present is actually kind of a common thing through David Lynch movies because Blue Velvet, there's a lot of spit in that movie, too. Yeah. A lot. So not, maybe that's you're like. You're not selling me on Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's in a different context, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But I can't no. think of it in some of his other yeah. movie, but maybe. I don't remember that's any a, spitting in the It's really leaned on in yeah. Blue Velvet. <gasps> Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff in this where it just comes off as like, I mean, you know, where Star Wars was basically a PG rated movie that was accessible to families and Mm -hmm. kids. This is a PG rated movie that's clearly, I think, going after the Star Wars audience. Oh, yeah. They didn't have PG 13 13 didn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. (sighs) PG 13 came around in 85 with The Woman in Red and Red Mm -hmm. Dawn, I think, were the first two Mm -hmm. PG 13 rated movies. Um, but yeah, so I think that, that overlay of kind of like, you know, nastiness, the gritty, ugh, yeah, slimy. that yeah. comes from David Lynch, mm-hmm. I think. I, don't I, I think can that's see necessarily that. In the, yeah. Sick motherfucker. You know what's missing from, okay, so here's the thing. And this was pointed out. <laughs> I'd to be hard pressed to tell you what's missing <laughs> from uh, this. <laughs> well, let me phrase it this way. Uh, staples of science fiction mm. that are missing from Dune. Okay. Computers, yeah. yep. mm-hmm. robots, like science fiction stories yeah. are seemingly always hinge around the technology, right? Where Dune goes the other way, and it's like this seems more Egyptian, if that makes sense, or Arab in or, some yeah, way. Some yeah. of the words, you know, like mm-hmm. we're waging the holy jihad and you yeah. know, Muad'Dib, Dib, or you Muad'Dib. know, yeah, all these words have like a kind of uh, Arabic, you know. 
Um, they yeah. did. They did have technology, though. Right, sliding they, doors the, and the, whatnot, yeah. the guns and shit. The, yeah, in the ships and um, mm-hmm. I don't. I just remember the guys in like the little saddles. <laughs> yeah, it was like computer saddles. Did you see that? I, <laughs> I don't know I, what that was. <laughs> I almost said that the technology is uh, subtle in this movie, but then I thought, wow, I'm applying the word subtle to this movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think that's correct. Right. No. So I'm gonna take that back. <laughs> yeah. But, but they yeah. do have like but you know, it's there. It's just not at the forefront. It doesn't feel like well, they're they're going for other things at a certain point. I do remember like you know the uh, whatever the training robot yeah. that drops out of the oh, is it a robot whatever the machine. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. machines obviously. It's like a pillar, like a it's robot a fighting pillar. machine. Yeah, and yeah. that like assassin pin that flies through the air too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. Thing. yeah, the hunter seeker. Yeah, the hunter seeker. Yeah. If I don't move. But they've trained in the novel. The it's explained syringe. that uh, yeah. at some point. You know, in the past, sometime between now and the world of Dune, that um, human beings outlawed, like there was a ruling that outlawed all thinking machines. And then they started Mm. training people to uh, basically become like computers. And that's where you get the Mentat class. All the people with the stained uh, lips, they're human computers. When did they say that? I remember Uh, several times. Did the the princess say that in the beginning? Was she a princess? Yes. Princess Irulu. Irulian. Irul- Irul- Irulian. <laughs> yeah. I just remember she said the spice a lot and was fading in and out a bunch. Yeah. That's all yeah, I gathered yeah, yeah. from that. Yeah. You I could just it. say words and it, you'd yeah. Be like, yeah, 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 her. Yeah. <laughs> she was played by, I mean, our cast. Virginia oh, yeah. Madsen. Virginia oh, yeah. Madsen. It's, it's quite a cast. Virginia Madsen. This movie does actually have a pretty solid cast. Yeah. Like, yeah Patrick does. Stewart is in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Looking just like Patrick Max Stewart. Max Moncito. Yeah. Max Moncito. Jurgen Prock now. Jurgen. Mm-hmm. Brad okay. Dourif. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And like the entire stable of David Lynch regulars, yep. including Kyle Jack McLaughlin. Nance. Jack Nance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jack Nance. Um, uh, God, what's his name? Dean Stockwell, because he mm-hmm. was in uh, Blue Velvet. Mm-hmm. Um, it's only, it's just missing Loughlin, Dennis Hopper. Loughlin, That's Loughlin. all it needs to complete the Yeah. yeah, yeah right? <laughs> what the fuck's her name? Uh, Ray Finkel. What's her name? Oh, Sean Young. Yeah. yeah. Ray Finkel. <laughs> what? What is that from? Ace Ventura. Einhorn. Oh, Einhorn. <laughs> Finkel. Einhorn. Finkel. <laughs> You're giving yeah, me flashbacks. I know. Sean Finkel. Young. Finkel and Einhorn. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have a crying game moment now? <laughs> she was the girl who famously was supposed to be Catwoman in Batman Returns. Oh, really? And had like a mental breakdown and lost it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm glad that didn't I happen. I remember hearing about this. I'm really yeah. glad that didn't happen. Yeah. I know it's a shame. All right, so Paul's uh, okay. So the theme of the movie, maybe Paul's character arc is to become the one. But by doing that, he has to abandon his royal life and go become go native with the Aboriginal peoples of the planet, the Fremen. Yeah. And then fight back against the oppressive colonial empire. Yes. But he has like a series of trials throughout. The he movie. does. Paul is also special in that has- in this future. They have told the women that they are only allowed to have females as children and that his mother went against that and decided to have a boy. So he's special in that regard. Well, it's not <laughs> everyone. This is just all the people of the, the Bene Gesserit yeah. society. So yeah. they're all women who have this uh, second sight ability. Yes. And they want all, you know, they've been manipulating bloodlines for <laughs> centuries. Yes. Even though they say somehow, like the there's a place in their subconscious, they're like generational they subconscious where they can't see past. Mm. And it's said in a prophecy that one day a man will come. It takes a man, apparently, and he will see into this. How do you guys read that? <laughs> Holly, Michaela, <Hi. laughs> problematic Thoughts? at best. <laughs> Oh, yeah. is that a personal mm-hmm. message from the people who? I mean, it's gotta yeah. be, that's got to be something that came from the book, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. So that's uh, we can blame him. Is yeah, it, don't worry. There's for me. It's, it's like it's like, it takes yeah. a man to do yes. this. A man will come along. Don't worry. The patriarch will still save yeah, you. Yeah, it's uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that seems that's to funny be. Uh, t- and that's like the exact reason Glenn Close turned down being in this movie. Is like she was offered. I don't remember which role, but she was offered a role and she was like, I don't want to just like chase a guy around the desert and have him pick me up when I fall down all the time. Is what right. she said. Uh, and that's why she so turned she must it have down. Been the, the mother. Then. Yeah. So that, Wait, that falls in line with that. How old is Glenn Close? Well, I was thinking in this movie, Kyle McLaughlin's mom did not look old enough to be his mom in this movie. She did. No. They she did really not look didn't. like far enough in age no. to be 
mother and son. But it's the future. Well, he's supposed yeah. to be 15. In the what? Book. What? Yeah. No. In the book, he's 15 years old. When he starts out. I mean, years go by. By the time <laughs> Yeah, sure. but he never looked 15 in this movie no. once. Yeah. Like 25. I think they, just, they, cast, yeah. they, they cast the old version and said, like, well, he'll just play he'll young. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So the well, remake, I mean, the they Denny took, Villeneuve they, version they will have a 15 Sure. Yeah, yeah, they probably. really did. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Is it uh, just a play on, like, the The savior. Messiah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Savior. it's a play yeah. on the yeah. savior, yeah. really. It, is. That, it just uh, happens to that he, it's a man. Yeah. And he'll be able to somehow see into the the core of, like, the collective unconsciousness, and that'll give him, like, the ability to cause rain. Yeah. He'll see into the place that apparently the women can't. Yeah. Access something. <laughs> Do you know what that is? <laughs> Do they know what it is? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't the think they do. They're trying to explain it in all of these, uh, like the you know, there's a re- recur- a couple of recurring right. motifs: the hand, the water drip, the, the moon, ring, the second moon, the ring, the moon, yeah, yeah, uh, the ring. Gianni s- saying s- s- like, uh, "Tell me of your home world, <laughs> Usul," yes. and the repeated nice. refrain of uh, "The sleeper must awaken." Yes, and uh, Dune, Arrakis, Dune, Desert Planet, or yes. whatever. And somehow, am I the one? <laughs> Am I the one? Okay. Well, okay. The we, fucking we get inner your... monologues we throughout this it. entire so... movie. <laughs> oh, my God. What the hell? Those were always... Uh, it was I, so distracting. I, mean, I, I kinda, have no idea what was At a certain happening. point, I kind of liked it. I'm just like, oh, what is, what is he thinking now? And then he would just come up with some bit. I don't... Was that all part... I always wonder if that's part of uh, the movie from the beginning or if they went back... And added things like that because sometimes Ooh, it's, it's info there. dumps. Yeah, oh, but it, sometimes it feels like an info dump. Sometimes it's just like one quick line of of something. So I mean, he it, sees it as the truth, right? Yeah. But <laughs> I can't imagine how much you would uh, not understand this movie if they weren't in there. Like, right. I wonder if that's a, a choice to go back and add it so that people will follow this movie at a certain point. Because, I mean, it's hard enough to follow as it is once, I mean, especially at the beginning, but to not have those in there, I mean, I would be completely lost as to specifically what they were going for. <laughs> I think it's so jarring because, like, now that you say that, this makes more sense, but, like, it seems like like the actors do, like, almost a quarter turn to camera when they it do does. that. Yeah. And then they pause for a second. As in, like, this is where my inner monologue is going to go. Yeah. You know, like, that's what makes it so jarring is that, like, it's so pointed. Right. You know? Yeah. But that's also what makes it feel like it was designed to be there. I think right. I read somewhere where they were saying that that was edited or added in post-production. The opening narration from uh, Virginia Madsen was added in post-production. Oh. But when you're watching it, it's like... I don't know. There is these pauses in their performance where it yeah. seems like this is where the inner monologue will come right. out. I don't know how but, else you would uh, but that's, interpret uh, that. Well, you can get that from, I mean, that's, if they do it right, that's just using footage on um, when the other actor they're talking to is doing their lines. Mm. Exactly. Like, if yeah. that actor is with them, they will pause to listen to the other actor. Right. So on the B-roll footage of that, they can just take that, put that in there. And you just add the voiceover to it. Like, yeah. if they did it afterwards and weren't planning on it, that's had to be how they did it. Yeah. It is odd because, I mean, just the experience of watching it now, you don't see movies with, A, a lot of narration, number one. Mm. B, you know, voiceover narration for individual characters. I mean, like, it is seriously every single character in this movie Spe- you know, <laughs> has this inner dialogue, which is explaining like how they feel about any given you know moment in the film. Right. I was waiting for. I'm hungry. Yeah. Yeah. But this What's also kind of gives it a flavor. Where's my dog? Right. Yeah. Where'd the pug go? Yeah. <laughs> my question: the entire fucking movie. Yeah. Where he the ran off in the battle pug? with Patrick Stewart, <laughs> strapped to his chest. Yeah. That Amazing. Was, that and was somehow survived part. in the desert. <laughs> right. Until That's the, the greatest the choice of this movie. That First to have the dog. Is the dog in the book? I have no idea. Oh my god! I'm guessing that's a David Lynch. Thing. I, it feels like that is like the I, royal I, dogs in the yeah. Emperor there's like the that guy yeah. with like ten bulldogs yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. I was there. I missed that. Yeah. There's it a guy was, walked right through the it throne was like room. Right at the with beginning, like, I yelled puppies. Oh right, right. Yeah. There were dogs. Yes. Yeah. yeah that. Yes. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Puppies. Yes. Yeah. That makes more sense. I feel like David Lynch has a like that's his dog. That's what I felt like. He's like I'm bringing my dog to set. And so goddamn it, that dog it. is going to make it all the way to the end. Of all the movie. way to the Fuck end. Yeah, it's dude. really hamming it up at certain points, though. Like <laughs> panting with its tongue, like sticking right out. Oh, I love that, that dog. That was the best choice of this movie. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but I mean, as far as the narration goes, like, yeah. uh, so you're saying that that was it was distracting because you're not used to it, or because I'm just curious if it like gives the movie a flavor that's distinct to this movie. Because it's like, well, I, fe- I mean, I felt like it was the lazy choice. Like there are things that they can't physically act out in this movie; they have mm. to actually tell you. I to me that's just <coughs> kind of lazy writing that they have to do that. I don't know I don't if know. they have any other way of doing it. It's. I mean, I, no, I, I agree. I don't know how else they would have done. Not it, to but say it's, it's good, just, but I mean, I, I did enjoy yeah. it as it went on. I'm just like, this is uh, this is funny. This well, is like, it gets to the point where you're like, what's he gonna think now? Like, yeah. like you said, like, yeah. am I the like, one? Yeah. <laughs> That's what was frustrating about it is that like, if you're gonna do it, use it for an info dump or like exposition. Don't use it just to, for filler nonsense like that. Yeah. And, like sometimes it was info dumps, and sometimes it was just like, I hope he'll be okay. And it's like, yeah. but uh, like, why do we need that? Him, like, yeah, he's talking to his mom. Yeah. And they're both having inner thoughts like just talk to each other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I couldn't tell yeah. at some points they were like because there are people who have uh, a telepathy in this movie and mm-hmm. I at certain points I couldn't imagine I'm like are they doing it too? Like are, are they, they talking yeah. to someone? Mm-hmm. Is he talking to his mom right now or is he just thinking something? Yeah. yeah. So I couldn't tell sometimes. Yeah. I guess that's the fun of trying to figure out. It's like what? <laughs> <laughs> Well, hello. <laughs> uh, yeah. Then there's the, you guessing. There's the sound weapons, which are also like an uh, I don't an awesome, okay. an interesting <laughs> addition to science fiction. Uh, you know, whatever. So they had an actual weapon, but it didn't work without the words. Is that right? What is it? Because they had right? like a little box that was shooting stuff, but they had to like talk to the box. Yeah. It's like a hand mounted, like a pistol kind of thing. Like a voice thing. activated. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And you've got a thing Gun. on your throat, the attenuator, maybe something. That you speak <laughs> a certain, well, yeah, because I'm uh, I'm not entirely sure on this. There I know that uh, the Bene Gesserit order has the ability to alter their voice in a way that basically words. does the Star Wars thing where, you know, like you, you yeah. know, these are not the droids you're looking for. Yes. You can do that. Only, you know, you sound like, uh, like, I don't know what, some type of <laughs> do it now. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> and it com- the voice, if you hear it compels you to do something. So the Atreides or Paul somehow figures out a way to concentrate it through yeah. this mechanism. Yeah. And Which certain want, words yeah. like trigger the the yeah. you know our killing words, yes. our breaking words. We can smash like bones and rupture organs by shouting at this them. obelisk is of your hardest stone. Kick it. <laughs> As for demonstration, <laughs> yes. all you really have to do is yeah, go up there and go, ah, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I that's what it felt like they were doing. Ah, so, cha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they just found a word. But I don't know why you need. I mean. Uh, an atten- you know, some type of physical some to filter it through in order. To- Maybe that it's got to turn that into something else. Yeah, it's so that's it. Yeah. It's that right, activates it's this mechanism the voice into some type of killer energy. Right. Wave. Later on, we find out that uh, Paul. I almost forgot his name. It's easy voice to activated weapon generator. Basically, yeah. that he right. doesn't need it at a certain point. Yeah, at the like very once end. Once we get to the end, once he yeah. becomes the one, very uh, Neo-ish. Yes, very. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which also borrows heavily from. No, okay. I mean, uh, there's got to be something. Cool. Just feels like it. Okay, so there's voice weapons. There's gigantic <laughs> sandworms, which of course you do not introduce a sandworm into your movie unless you're going to ride it at the end. That's that's what uh, Chekhov's Absolutely. first rule. Yeah. 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 Like the first yeah. rule is the gun. The first rule the is the sandworm. The okay. Yeah. <laughs> so introduce the sandworm at the beginning of the movie, and by the end you have to ride it. Yeah, which I think the sandworm is the most enduring icon of any kind of Dune, you know, because I think it was on a bunch of the mm-hmm. you know, um, that's all I knew about it. Hard covers. Yeah, somebody yeah, just yeah. Uh, maybe it was one of us for the thing, but somebody had um, I saw recently a drawing uh, artwork somebody had done of all like sandworms through time. There was Beetlejuice, there was the Dune worms, there was the Graboids. Really? Yeah. I just saw artwork that had them all on there. <laughs> Kevin Bacon's riding the the Graboy and everything. <laughs> oh, well, there yeah, you I go. just I'm like, wow. I I yeah. couldn't remember it. Like, wow, this is opportune that it comes up now that we're gonna do Dune. Right. Facebook yeah. knows. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> God damn it. Somehow it's been reading your yeah. It knows they're your listening right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll take the paranoid role. They're listening right now. Mm. Yes. 
Did you guys know that? So that part when Kyle McLaughlin sticks that shovel thing into the side of the yeah. worm yeah. to ride it, and he like pries it, and you see like the innards of the yeah. worm a little yeah. bit. So like you know how like it had that like stretched out like gum look. Yeah, yeah. They they did that. <laughs> that special effect was done using condoms. Uh, <laughs> really? Yep. Never. Uh, condoms are used condoms for so are much used in the special effects world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you yep. gotta have like a box of them. Yep. Yeah. Just always be prepared. As a special effects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. As a special you know what's happening guy. here? Yeah. 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 He broke open the scale so the thing automatically rotates to keep its un uh shielded part of it on top. That's uh-huh. how you Right. Ride that's how you rise it up. Yeah. And then oh, yeah. Yeah. stuff. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. That part of him riding it up was like some of the worst CG in this movie, though, for sure. Like a tiny one of him, like a oh. hundred years before CG. Yeah, but I mean, well, no, this this movie actually had some of the first well, computer generated the, graphics the ever. Yeah, the yeah. body shields. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but the they special effects the of him men. riding it up, it's just like him standing still like this and then moving like things behind him <laughs> to make it look like he's yeah. moving. Yeah. They even did a little uh, Batman photography as far as like the camera turns sideways and they're climbing up mm-hmm. something. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. wonderful. Oh, yeah. yep. They're employing like oh, yeah. all the tricks. Yep. This movie's made in Mexico. It was a Mexican oh, crew and Mexican studios. Carlo Rambaldi, who has done, he designed E.T., I think we said at oh. one point, he designed the uh, King Kong. For Dino De Laurentiis in 1976, did the creature design for this movie. Um, I liked it. I liked the Giannetto De Rossi, who like worked on all the Lucio Fulci, you know, Italian splatter movies, was also credited there at the end. So I mean, like I saw the bright red blood. It's hard to look at the special effects in this movie and consider them. I mean, like they were the contemporary, I suppose, of its time. But oh. I mean, it, the it's it's. Um, closest competitors you have to look at like return of the jedi right 1983 mm-hmm. this is 84 and how well does that stack up against like you know <laughs> the work of ilm which really was you know you, you look back at it now i mean when you look at all the stuff like star crash right <laughs> yes. it was a movie that wanted to do outer space stuff and how it compares to star wars <laughs> you know yes. like with the whatever model the, uh, the navy literal literal navy together. ship models yeah. and Brackets and everything just glued together. Yeah, and just flung through yeah, whatever the throw it in there background. It'll blow up. And so you have God, Dune, which is movie. like it's more advanced than that. Mm-hmm. And they're going for that kind of distressed, futuristic, um, you know, look to the the ships and all. Right, that, right? I can see how paint Rid- jobs. Right, I can see how the Ridley Scott element you mentioned earlier, or at least uh, knowing his tastes at that point. Like why he would be interested in stuff like this, because when you mention those filmmakers based on um, uh, the designs of this movie, they, they all seem similar at that point. Uh, I don't know what where I was going with that. Uh, Does this well, similar in like what way? Because I mean, a lot like of you the, said, the distressed look and the the old look and just I mean, sometimes maybe even the model use. Yeah, maybe that we see it. in this movie. I think, I think that's more the model, more work the model than than the work. design of them. Because yeah. I mean, in this movie, you have like. Uh, triangle shaped spaceships. Yes. Which is just like, what the fuck? You know, yeah, the, right. the it's just, one that has the, uh, it's called the ornithopter, but it has the, uh, <laughs> the wings. <laughs> <They come up>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <Okay. laughs> it's just, they're very. Ornithology is a study of birds, right? Yeah. It's supposed to hop. I think like it hops across the desert. That's how. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I know. It's, yeah. I know too much about Dune. I think. That, yeah. And yet, still, there's things you don't know. So this movie is too no dense. One can know. Yeah. Because it's almost like the movie to me is split into two halves. And the, the, that the half midpoint, where they drag everything out, and the half where they're just like, <laughs> yes, yeah, because the <laughs> midpoint to me occurs when Paul and his mother make it into the desert, mm-hmm. and he says, "Father," you know, yes. whatever, and the lightning <laughs> crashes and all that. That's where the intermission goes. Yeah, right? yeah. <clears throat> the first half is all this like, there's a plot to kill the Duke. Yeah. It's the Harkonnens are somehow there's sabotage. The Harkonnens have got a traitor in their midst. And, you know, we have to set up what Arrakis is, how the spice mining works, uh, you know, and, and just basically world building. And right. then it's like, you and know, we will entry. spare no time to it. <clears throat> and the second half is Paul's ascension through the ranks of the Fremen who adopt him. Yes. And rather quickly, by the way, it's like you could kill us. You should join us. 
It's basically, yeah. it's real quick. And he falls in love with Sean Young real yeah. quick. It's all very, <laughs> His very mom fast. becomes their reverend mother. Yeah, for she... as much as it's dragged out in the first half of the movie, it all goes smooth sailing right through that second half of that movie. Yeah, until all quick. he oh, yeah. has a sister. Yeah. That's like six yeah. years old all of a yeah. sudden. That Last time we heard about it was my mom's pregnant. Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden he's got a six-year-old sister. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, she drinks the water and has a half-born baby. They did throw in there that she was rapidly growing. That's and voiceover, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, where, you know. right. All that seems to be coming from like they had the whole version of it, and they're just like, we need to shorten some of this down somewhere at some point. They're yeah, like, how do we original explain cut that? Was like Bring four Virginia hours. Yeah, oh yeah, had to be, had to be four yeah. hours. So or his like, original, whatever the footage that he shot, he yeah. shot like a four-hour version of the yeah. movie that was like, we got to shorten this to two. Yeah, and they got it to two. Whatever. Why they decided to wait until the second half of the movie? They're just like, all right, let's go. Come on. <laughs> because don't you think? I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's a personal thing. I think the the, the first half with the Needs the in to be the, like the palace intrigue and all that yeah. stuff works better. I mean, because there's a there's a little bit of suspense mm. as far as like how all these characters are going to line up and yes. what's going to happen. And there is a plot to yeah. a, a literal plot a little to kill. Plot to yeah, kill yeah. where does the yes. pug go? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I got it. Yeah. Now we're mm. Holly's. A yeah. 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 Where's that damn dog? Is that damn dog okay? <laughs> they better not kill the dog. <clears throat> Whereas the second half then becomes you know, I don't know what. I mean, the big moments are him learning to ride the the, the sand sand worms. worms. Yeah. Um, him learning to drink the water and become the one. But this all yeah. enters into the realm of like the mystic, and that's yes. where you get more of that impressionistic kind of imagery, and mm-hmm. it becomes more surreal and less focused. And I think the attention of the viewer starts to wander because you're not sure what the fuck is going on. Right. Yeah. All well, right. There's water under, <clears throat> underneath everything. And that just kind of gets left to nowhere. Right. Yeah, they have a thousand caches of water underneath. They're going to yes. change Iraq somehow. But somehow Paul has the, at the end of the movie, the magical ability right. to just call water down from right. the sky. Well, that, that using was his voice. Do you know, it's like, <laughs> oh, he was. Like, oh. <clears throat> but that was their plan. That was him. <laughs> Now, yeah, he was. He was. I thought that was just was a weird. Buried oh. under the music. It was. I, I was there. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was I just a hear weird it. Toto choice. But I, get, but I get the story in the second half. Like, there's the Fremen who are like they are. They said they have thousands of these caches of water all over the place, and they are going to change Arrakis. And I mean, this is their plan until the one shows up to do what he's supposed to do. Until that point, like they don't know if it's real or not. So they have like Plan B is to collect these caches of water and it's basically the long way to do what they want to do yeah and then paul shows up and then it kind of shortens up because he is the one yeah and can help them with the prophecy there's a prophecy in this movie by the way <laughs> of course there is because there's always a prophecy but yeah. there's a prophecy in this movie so if we've got toto doing the soundtrack and we literally have someone making it rain yeah why is- why are we right? like, kicking into Africa right as soon as that starts? Like the that would have saved that. I the probably would like this movie if they did that. Has to be why they thought of Toto yeah. to do the score, yeah. right? It's like it's raining in the desert. Yeah. Get me Toto. Toto. Then pick up the red phone. Get me Toto. Yeah. Yeah. Now. <laughs> They're the only ones who can do this. Yeah. I hope no, you can't use that song. The whole fucking movie I was waiting for right. that song. I, I'm sure someone on YouTube has already done that. Oh, to, this, so. to that scene of this movie. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're kind of wrapping this up, I suppose. Are we? Is there a lot more to explore in Dune? I don't know. We didn't talk about his weird ass little sister, but there's not really much to say. She was creepy. Alicia yeah. Witt yeah. as a young girl. That's Alicia Witt? Yes, it's Alicia what? Witt. She, I didn't notice she was a redhead, too. When her stuff started falling off. That's Alicia Witt? That's Alicia Witt. Wow. Yeah. All right. Interesting. She talks very creepy. Very creepy. It's like, he I, is the Queen cataract. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I talk like this. And, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you, you must was it scared me i was very scared i was not it was surprising you said- <laughs> it's it very surprising yep you sounded like louis armstrong <laughs> yes yeah 
<sighs> there it is. Oh, um, I mean, um, yeah, I, it's yeah. so so it ends. He does make it rain. Oh, he fights. He fights Sting at the end. We, that's we, the oh, other part. Yeah. That's the big yeah. thing at the yeah. end. He's like, why, why Sting? I don't like why he doesn't. I guess this is his last like opponent. He could beat everyone else, but he's still got Sting there. I think the just, other redhead's yeah. got his head cut off. I think because Sting was just on the payroll. They're like, well, we got to keep using him. He says ninety words in this whole movie. See, he, he ninety have a point. words. He like does. He's there he to does. Be, no, when okay, you calm when, down. When he's all he's there to be sexy. Up. Yeah, and his kind piece. He is. He's there to walk out. It is like, the weirdest yeah. fucking uh. thing in the world. He comes out of a steam room and in, in right. a cod piece. That's it. That's it. Was his uh, major, and then you lost him at it, the it end. It had like wings. The cod piece. <laughs> yeah, it did. It, did. it really did. Yeah. It, so I think my favorite part of this movie is like the very beginning when the sperm larva in a tank comes to deliver yeah, the news. Yeah, we haven't even mentioned yeah. this guy yet. Yeah. So what I, is he? Because I don't know what he is. I don't know what yeah. he does. So sperm larva in a space <laughs> navigator. He's the he guy is, who's been I deformed by 4,000 years. <laughs> we didn't have this conversation. And he he can time travel. Just like a Jedi. <laughs> he <laughs> pulled <laughs> space. <at all. laughs> so the sperm larva in a tank comes and tells them all this really important information. And he is a talking vagina. <laughs> He's for a mouth, mouth. yeah. I yeah. always yeah. love that they've they've grown so sophisticated. He's like the he's like the brain bug. But yeah. they've grown so sophisticated at some point that they don't need limbs. Like, yeah. I'm so intelligent, I don't need appendages. Yeah. But I have to be brain. in this tank. I have to be in this tank to stay alive, though. Yes. And, his, yeah. and his tank leaves a trail of, like, slime. slime. <laughs> yeah. And there's one uh, dude with a mop <laughs> walking behind <laughs> But my favorite part is after he delivers all his important information about why they need to kill Paul, and then he goes... I was never here. You didn't talk to me and backs out. And like, he's like, like this stoic mystical being that knows everything. And then that's how he, his exit is. Like his exit yeah. is, you didn't it's, talk to me. Yeah. The guy who's so obviously leaving a room. Yeah. Not to like, you didn't see Yeah. Me. And his exit is so slow. It's comical because that big tank has to slide out <laughs> after right, he goes, that yeah, wasn't engine me. engine that comes into yeah. the room. It's like, this guy can fold space and time. Yeah. You can be up. anywhere yeah, without Why does he just pop like, into yeah. existence? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he yeah. has to be like encased in a bunch of spice gas. <laughs> Spice spice gas. Gas. Spice and then he's shooting like gas. lasers out of his ass <laughs> later on to full time. <laughs> yeah, it was out of his vagina mouth. Yeah. Um, just, the little oh. sperm was shooting space lights <laughs> out, and they were like yeah. forming into planets. Well, what? How that? do you fold space? <laughs> It's like it's Carefully. like he was blasting the destinations he wanted to go to. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I want to go there, yeah. and there, and put them together. All right, so what we're talking about is a deficit in the visual storytelling, right? The mm. fact that like this doesn't really make you can't determine by Certain looking things, at yes. these pic- these images what the fuck is happening. Like it must mean something to David Lynch, but yeah, it's literally like what, like three minutes of him like optical effects. Yeah, yeah. Where a laser, a sperm is shooting shoots lasers, out of his mouth. Yeah. and they turn into planets. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. magically the ship appears in the orbit of Arrakis. It's but yeah, but it's like a cut to that. Not it doesn't. There's not like no correlation between that happening and causing this. It's just like, oh, now there's a ship there. Yeah, it was yeah. more like it a, felt like the ship was already going there. And now we're just, cutting to a different scene. It was more like than a scene change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We're showing the mechanism of how it works, and then cutting to the end result, and then you know, or the destination. Right. Because I actually didn't realize they were related to just the second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's, 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 if, if it does, if it's not conveyed, yeah. then you're not doing it right. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? As a as a director. Oh, oh no. Are you talking about the floating battery. Like the 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 long, it was like a battery yeah. looking yeah. thing. It looked like a Duracell commercial. Yeah, it's, it's something. All of their ships I didn't realize, going to it. And I didn't realize that was transport. With the sperm they were all just thing. hanging out at odd angles in space. Like yeah. they could at least line up or something. That was the sperm was in that thing somewhere oh in the God. center of it. Yeah, where all that lights <laughs> and shit was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I promise okay. I watched this movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've gone on about an hour trying to solve the mysteries of Dune. Maybe no one never ever will. We don't know. But, or wait, you want to say something else? I was going to say, Denny Villeneuve will try. I was going to say, he's going to try. He will try. I mean, no, if there's anybody, equi- for you if there's anybody for that movie. equipped to do it, it's probably him. Yeah. Because I de- really Scott, I don't think, would have the patience to uh well, give he his did. time for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, but he would I don't think he would go back and try at this point. Yeah. 
He so, went on to Blade Runner. And, yeah, you know, and, and well, I mean, but then Denny Villeneuve did that as well. So like, he's true. he's the guy at this point to yeah. do something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, is is should he like? Is this a he waste says of time? He's had at this point? the images in his mind for thirty five years. So it's so basically since he saw the David Lynch Dune, sure. he was like, I can do this better. Maybe we're gonna see. You know, now I am all. God damn it. Thank you, Colin. I am now interested in seeing the Denny Villeneuve. Yeah, do yeah. we have to see. I'm like, I have, have to compare. To yeah. I almost really want to see the miniseries now. And it's on YouTube. I'm gonna find. I, I have I'm to see the comparison. I have to now. This is a thing. I, I, I want to know if somebody can make it clear or right. what they can do with this material and what what you know what. If, to other filmmakers, what they view as a necessity that has to stay in compared to this one and what yeah. goes mm-hmm. yeah. to get across the same story. Mm-hmm. Now I have to see it. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I <laughs> You're feel like, welcome. I feel like Den- Denny Villeneuve handles pacing incredibly well. Yes. So that's it. I think that's really important since we were just talking about how horrible the pacing is in this yeah. movie. So I think that he might leave a lot out compared to this movie, but sure. the pacing will feel much more acceptable right. to a viewer. But that'll be the you difference. You explain. I mean, like, somehow, yeah. how do you convey this information? Mm-hmm. I mean, especially right. I mean, visually, A, and just in the language and all that, how do you... I mean, you have to delve into it to somehow, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. well, so they can understand what you're talking about. I can imagine... So abstract. Right, but I can imagine what they're going to do beforehand is in... Uh, for this version, they had to take stuff out after the fact, whereas I assume that uh, Villeneuve and his team are going to go in and look at it and extract the things in the writing process mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. and what they can make, you know, put more of a sh- put together more like we don't need this. We yeah. can put, connect these two. We don't need it this. Ha- we connect these two. I think if they're smart, this is what they should do. I feel make it shorter in that process way early on. It mm-hmm. desperately mm-hmm. needs to be stripped, condensed, and connected. Mm-hmm. Right. That, that's, that's that's what they need to do they first to do. off. They didn't do that for this one. They that's. I mean, you can tell just by the pacing in this movie that they had to take chunks out as you know after everything. In the new one, I feel they'll have to take it out before. And I think in that way they might be able to. Uh, knowing very little about this, they might be able to make a universe out of this that is uh, somewhat coherent. Maybe. Was that your final wrap? Uh, oh, it was. Uh, you can just skip me for the yeah. next one. Uh, that's, that's fine. Everything I just said now, plus I don't recommend doing. Uh, I, I mean, I guess that's it. Like, I don't. Uh, it's. I mean, well, we it's, haven't done mailbag it, yet. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So hang on. Oh man. no! I just want to get it out now. Okay, go. All right, so uh, yeah. tune in for, in a minute for our final wrap-up. Sean does things his own way. Yeah. First of all, we're going to summon Igor the mailman. Igor, where are you, sir? Masters! Masters the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Hey, if you want, we're going to read some mail that we've received Do we from a lot of mail various column? social media. If you want to get a hold of us, you can get a hold of us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show or on Twitter at Sat Freak Show or the old fashioned way. You can email us directly Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. We need something from Michaela. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be know. like Instagram. Instagram <laughs> probably. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The Instagram yeah. account or yeah, give her the Facebook that. one. Like you just yeah. name us all off. <laughs> Facebook. Or just right, go right around. Okay, mm-hmm. so um, here's what we've got. First of all, about Dune. Dune. Andrew Kelpfus writes in oh. and says, Dune is actually one of my favorite movies. I read the book first, so I was able to follow the movie pretty well. Matthew Pearson writes in and said, Dune is his favorite book. I have read it half a dozen times now. Wow. Even with the discrepancies, I like the movie as well. And Hosby Trippin. <laughs> 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 says growing up my local tv station used to air a wide range of sci-fi movies every saturday afternoon from blade runner to 50s b movies such as tarantula and i sat through all of them except for one dune there's also three poop emojis after that too yes. oh, um, <laughs> after right. the dune there was three poop who, emojis who submitted that Hosby tripping. Hosby tripping. Hosby tripping. Yeah. Okay, so you can comment on any show that we've done, including some of our past episodes. Uh, Metaluna Zombie, a user who was listening to us on YouTube, commented on Rock and Roll Nightmare, past episode, and said, This is among the best. Now, I don't know if Metaluna means 
the show or the movie? We'll say the show. I'm going to say the show. There yeah, you go. we'll say the show. Because that movie's definitely yeah. not. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there's no way she meant the movie. Thank he you. meant the movie. Whatever. Yeah. All right, for My Bloody that Valentine, that, that yeah. was that rock and roll nightmare. For My <laughs> Bloody Valentine, Dom Cree said he's very impressed by Michaela and Holly's rating scales for this episode. Hey. Yeah. As yeah. for Sean and Colin, time to up your rating. Oh, oh call out. Okay. Call out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dom. He says it's also great to see more people discovering the brilliance of the show. Thank you very much, Dom. Thanks, Dom. Thanks, Dom. Uh, Chris Huddleston says he watched The Prowler for the first time recently, and you're right, it's pretty crappy. He'd heard good things about it and was very disappointed. Any members of the freak show buying cl- these classic horror soundtrack reissues really quickly a correction we said that uh, we were trying to find a my bloody valentine yeah. soundtrack and it, it does exist does exist yep. by waxwork rec- waxwork records mm-hmm. and it's a pretty nice release this is one of those it is. it's one of those niche companies who like they take their time to acquire like they go back and find master tapes and mm-hmm. all this stuff and do re-releases of old horror soundtracks waxwork is uh, specifically old horror soundtracks mm-hmm. and they've done uh, probably 30 over the past uh, couple years and we found a My Bloody Valentine one, which is a very nice release. Red vinyl records and uh, great detail in the artwork. Uh, yeah, I would. Uh, we all sat around here yeah. once we figured it out. And we're like, ooh, I want that. Did yeah. you yeah. buy it? I didn't buy that one. Chris is and asking. I didn't buy that one. And the artwork is by... Uh, um Ghoulish Gary Pullen. Yeah, Gary Pullen, who's a, a friend of mine, also does artwork for Mondo. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, yeah oh. he, does, he does artwork for Mondo a lot of times. He does artwork for... He's a huge horror fan. He's Canadian. Ah, um, he's, yeah. So he he's, must have had some pride in doing that one. <laughs> yeah, but like he doesn't have a very noticeable accent. I've noticed. So he, yeah, uh, no, he's a he's a great guy. He's a good artist. Like you can always tell his stuff because it mm-hmm. looks heads and tails I, above yeah, everybody it looks else's good. artwork. Legit. Yeah, yeah it's, so good looking art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go check ballad, out his stuff. The Ballad of Harry Warden. I mean, yeah, I you can't. That's, very that's worth that's the price alone. Yeah, it's worth yeah. it. For a yeah. stirring rendition of part of that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so worth it. But I did buy recently. They reissued the Thing soundtrack, mm-hmm. uh-huh. which I mm-hmm. did purchase mm-hmm. for an go. excessive amount of money. I'm not going to say how much, but yeah. I, uh, <laughs> worth it. Does your wife know how much you spent? on Nope, it? she doesn't even know I bought it. Shut up. <laughs> uh-huh. so we answer... got taxes back. Okay, <laughs> just don't rat me out. All right. So the answer, Chris, is yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we are. Uh, we yeah. are buying them. He also says he recently sh- signed up for Shutter, which has a pretty extensive Giallo selection. Since we're uh, at least oh, yeah. talking about, it. Cool. he says he's seen most of the Argento films and watched Bava's Bay of Blood a few nights ago. What are some other must sees? That I should check out. Colin, Colin, this is all you do. The red, red, red something, red, something's I, red. I mean, deep red. Deep red. Yeah, blood, right. blood and black Tenebrae. lace is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, that, I like that one a lot. But outside of the Argento no, stuff? I, I only know the really mainstream stuff, so. Check out um, The Case of the Bloody Iris, if you can find that one with uh, Ed, Ed Veej Fennec and... Um, the case also, of the Bloody Iris. Case of the Bloody Iris. Were like you not job. here for our Jalo name? Sounds like a naming, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, is it, what is it? Is it? A, you played a game with us in one of them. I think it was. Uh, is, it, we watch, is it Jalo or not? Did we watch Tenebrae? <laughs> yeah. When we watched Tenebrae, it was. Yeah. Is it Jalo or is it made up or yeah, something like all that? All the colors of the dark. The yeah. <laughs> lizard with the or woman or lizard in a woman's skin. Right. The, the, the bird with the crystal duckling, plumage or something. Four flies yep. on gray velvet. Yeah. Yeah. Another one you should check out, Chris, is if they have it. What have you done to Solange? That's another good uh, giallo What did they do for Solange? I can't tell you. You got to find out. (laughs) All right. So now we're going to give you our final wrap ups on Dune, starting with Sean. Go. Ah, okay. Uh, Dune. Um, I mean, like we said, uh, the pacing of this movie to me, it's uh, I mean, it's a little lopsided, as we said. Um, They take their time in the first half of the movie, and then it feels like um, they're rushing through it in the second half. Um, when we're first introduced to kind of the uh, the world that they're creating here in this movie, um, they're throwing stuff at you pretty quick, pretty fast, and it's hard to – you can kind of understand the, the general sense of what people are doing if you can't remember the names of everybody. Um, but, I mean, I got the story of what was going on, um, but uh, the movie – I mean, A, I think it's too – Long, um, although based on what we know about the books and everything, I don't know how this could be a short movie. Um, I do like, um, I mean, the cast is uh, very good. Um, the visuals, I, 
Uh, this one's a hard from hard movie for me. I don't think I would recommend it just because like, I don't think I would ever watch this again. Um, yeah, that's a hard one. Um, I, but it does pique my interest in the fact that I want to see like other versions of this. Cause like Colin said, this is like a code people are still trying to crack. I don't, I don't think I get like the, uh, the want to see this movie. Like, I don't get why this particular thing is so popular in science fiction. I don't know why people are still attracted to this because it doesn't seem that, and this is looking at it, you know, uh, what, 20 something years on 30 something years on. I don't understand the attraction to it and why people would keep going back to it. Um, it was a product of the hippie generation. I mean, yeah, (laughs) it's definitely a product of its time. Um, Visuals are interesting. Uh, the story is, I think, overly long. Uh, I, I think the visuals are the biggest selling point of this movie. Those, the sandworms and, and all that, um, I found, uh, I mean, that's a great design. I would like it a lot. But s- as far as story goes, um, I don't think I will. Uh, I'll do everything I can to not watch this movie again. <laughs> I think that's the best way to put it. I, I won't sit through this again. I can't do it. Um, I'll I'll check out some alternate versions of it just as a comparison sake, but I I can't recommend Dune. Um, no, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want anybody to sit through this. Um, it didn't didn't do enough for me. There wasn't enough there to to hook me in. So no, I pass on Dune. Um. Well. Uh, I I was just I just kept thinking. First of all, I kept thinking you know, this movie really reminded me of Flash Gordon in a lot of ways. Um, and then ah, Colin, and- <laughs> he'll save every one of us. <laughs> I know I missed Queen. Um, but then, it didn't have and- a song. Where's the Dune song? I know. Yeah. I was it was gonna- Brian Eno. I was, was going to talk like about that. End. It was uh, horrible. Okay. Colin <laughs> did mention that um, this was produced by the same guy who Dino De Laurentiis. Yes, and he also did Flash Gordon, so that mm-hmm. explains. This is produced by like all the De Laurentiis. There was a number of them in this credit sequence. I know. Um, Even the dead one at the beginning. He, he, the dead one. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, dedicated to him. <laughs> dead De Laurentiis. The dead. Yeah. Ah, dedicated dead, dead to De the dead De Laurentiis. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I I just kept thinking is that this movie was so fucking long. It was so long. I kept thinking I had only seen pictures of like them walking around in the desert and I kept thinking yeah. this is still going and they haven't walked in the desert yet. <laughs> <laughs> right, huh? There's certain oh, yeah. landmarks you can gauge it by and just like they're still not in the desert. Oh my god, they're not walking in the desert yet. This is taking forever. Um yeah, <laughs> I agree with with Colin that it can be separated um, timeline wise, but the first one just seemed so long, and I I don't know, it just didn't really do it for me. It was pretty boring. Um, I think probably because it was so fucking confusing. I was really confused this whole movie. Um, I I did really appreciate the production value. I thought the sets were fantastic. The costumes were really spot on. They were, they were really intricate. Um, I definitely appreciated that about this. They were, it it was impressive. Like it was such a grand scale. Everything was, um, and I I dug the sandworms. I thought that was cool. They were a little phallic for my taste. (laughs) Since everything else was very, I mean, when is a worm not phallic? I mean, (laughs) this, Especially, uh, <laughs> they were there were a bunch of men riding them into yeah to save save women that can't yeah to save women that can't like, wow yeah. was a lot Any, of, w- it opens up and there's rows and layers of flesh inside of it and a bunch of yours I, doesn't do that. <laughs> no, I'm saying you're not gonna um, find one that does. Um, a cat, <laughs> excuse me, a cat's penis is barbed, yeah. just like that. Yep. What? So, yeah, what? Yeah, cat, cats have is. barbed penises. Car- yeah. Jesus yeah. Cats That's why it sounds right. so painful when cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they can yeah, hook exactly. in and not. Yeah, yeah. That's so why so it they, sounds yeah. so. That's why they yell so that's much. That's why it's so <laughs> horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's like. Duck penises are corkscrewed too. <laughs> yeah, like these are things I know. Like Sean's reaction bought. is why we need to live stream yeah. this stuff. I, I have to go home and separate my cats. I, I love that. Even Kayla, like, why do they Duh. know this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is like Snapple cap knowledge, uh, guys. I mean, I've googled a lot of things. I've never been like cat penises. Yeah. You don't Google that. You just know. It's no. just something you pick up. It's just yeah. something you pick up on the street, Sean. 
<sighs> I wonder why it, it sounded and looked as like a, such a. That's why my the female it, cat keeps running away from the male. Yeah, cat. yeah. No. Yeah. I bet Hoes be tripping. Knew. <laughs> I bet Hose he knew. Be Hoes be tripping <laughs> probably knew that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So. You learn we're something disturbed by the phallic looking. There is yeah. a lot of gender biases and just genitalia type creatures. It's weird. I don't know. This movie was weird as fuck. It was really confusing. I can't recommend it. I give it maybe one floaty space sperm. <laughs> one. Out of? Just one lonely one. I don't know, five. Out of ten. What's the matter? It's one. Well, I mean, one, one out of one four of, isn't bad. No, one out of two one out of is five half. Not really one, one out of four one out of is still not terrible. great. One out of four is still not great. Dom Cree's going to get on you and me for our rating system. <laughs> I got one. I'm ready. You <laughs> oh, it up. I'm the one who started this rating system. <laughs> me didn't know. Everyone else has hijacked it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm sorry. So I historically have hated this movie. But I really hate this movie. Yet watched it so uh, many times. Yeah. Well, I dated a guy for two months and in the two months that we dated, I think we watched this like four or five times because oh, this so was his favorite. Was only two this months. was his favorite movie. And like, no, I, when I, you're I, in that stage of dating, you're not going to be like, oh, I have fuck. to ask, you actually right. watched it. Yeah, no, okay. like actually watched it. And then when that I was sucks. in college, in a, I, there was like a film studies class I was in. Guess what movie I had to write a fucking paper on? This movie. <laughs> so like, I just, and like when you can't even understand the movie, writing a paper on it's it is like, like I no don't play, fucking know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that being said, I tried to go into it like not thinking about that college paper, that ex-boyfriend, and just watch this movie. And I think maybe, I think the Blu-ray actually really helps it a lot to note, like bump up the production value and like there are groundbreaking things that did happen in this movie, but there are better David Lynch movies. There are better sci-fi movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this would actually be better served as like the Westworld treatment, like a, like a, min, like a mini HBO mini series with a gigantic budget, like yeah. a huge budget, yeah. but they have the time to let the story unfold, you know, and they don't have to like crunch it down within a cinematic time frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, th- I feel like a Westworld type series would be best served. However, I don't see HBO willing to throw the money at it because i mean this movie for people who haven't seen this movie know that it's not good like even people that haven't seen it are like oh yeah i heard it's terrible like or that it's troubled if nothing else yeah exactly so i can't see it being a commodity that a network like hbo would be willing to take a chance on if i did it Sci-fi How much money has considerably less money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The sci-fi channel yeah. is an entity all on its own. <laughs> yeah, they also do how many Sharknado You're movies, right, yeah. you know, right. so. Yeah, yeah. Um, they just buy those. They <laughs> pay the money for them. That's the asylum. Man. Right. But, um, yeah, so I wouldn't recommend it. I would say there there's an episode of Futurama where they go to a desert planet and Fry becomes king of water people. And that's a better version of Dune than this movie. So I would say go watch the Futurama episode or, you know. Just there's so many better sci-fi movies and better David Lynch movies. I feel bad that this is Sean's first David Lynch movie. Yeah, I feel like you got to wash uh, that taste out of your mouth. Yeah, I mean it hasn't put me off wanting to explore other David Lynch mm-hmm. movies. Yeah, but uh, yeah. there's mm-hmm. definitely some similarities, but not sure. But I can't imagine yeah. like none of them look on. None of them look. This is this, this seems to me like an anomaly in his work. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Well, that's well, yeah. Like so this seems a like a straight story. You know yeah, what I mean? like but, but yeah, yeah, but at least there's those are like more grounded in a um, human story. Yeah. Not a, there's definitely a David Lynch spice. Yeah. Uh, the the thing David Lynch does you best. Get a five minute time out. <laughs> no more. You will know. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that David Lynch does best is sorry, sh- is like that. is showing yeah. you a small town and then showing you like all the grossness that lies beneath that small town. That's what he does best, and that's okay. what and I think that's what he likes doing best because um, that comes through in his work. So like this is a huge you know yeah like he said anomaly in his career, and I I don't think anyone judges his career solely on this. Thankfully, yeah. so yeah, I, just, I think I don't, I don't think he'd be working. He yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Him yeah exactly. So. <laughs> Yeah, I don't recommend it. Oh, okay. No, so no. That's a, that's a no. Still don't. Colin, um, what do you think of uh, the movie you picked? All right, so yeah, the reason I picked it is because it is an anomaly. I think not only in David Lynch's filmography, which you know, watching it now, I'm seeing more of David Lynch in it 
uh, but it's not the David Lynch of Blue Velvet. It's more the David Lynch of like Eraser Head. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, there's that Eraser Head vibe and the kind of the dream stuff, which I guess I see in uh, uh, Lost Highway is a very nightmarish kind of dream mm -hmm. thing. Uh, you know, Twin uh, Firewalk with Me and uh, and Mulholland Drive. It's less the David Lynch of Twin Peaks and um, mm -hmm. uh, Blue Velvet or Elephant Man or whatever. You know. Um, so it's like I still feel that he's there, but this is like it, he it's diluted, you know? This is David Lynch like watered way down because I think he's trying to serve the corporate, you know, idea of what a gigantic, expensive space opera is supposed to be. It's a very operatic movie, which I think is cool. There's all these idiosyncrasies which I don't think they play well. And I think, you know, obviously I'm in a room full of people tonight who saw it and just rejected it. Like, <laughs> right out of here. so I get that. <clears throat> but on the flip side of looking at it, it's like the stuff that he's doing is so weird. And maybe this is what he was setting out to do. It's like, I'm going to make a movie that's so weird that it will have nothing to compare it to, you know, <laughs> which it will stand alone. Yeah, it kind of does have that in some ways. I mean, there's echoes of maybe 2001 in there a little bit where I was like, okay, this could be, you know. But uh, in some of the, you know, the space uh, mm -hmm. fairing parts of it. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm mm -hmm. thinking of the image of the ship, the bone-shaped right. ship showing up, but like the Discovery showing up outside of Arrakis or whatever in space. Um the first half of the movie, I got to tell you, actually does work for me. And I think that's why I like the film um, and probably why I would recommend it because, like, you know, I like the Jurgen Proc now character of the Duke. I like the interplay between Paul and the, all the weird people, the Brad Dorif character and, you know, like all the way all these characters interact in the first half where it's setting up the universe, even though the special effects you got to look past. Hmm. Okay, and if you can't, then you're out. You know, it's not hmm. gonna happen because you're. It's a combination of like you know these '80s style blue screen special effects and really odd designs, which I sit there going like, this is odd and doesn't work. This looks ridiculous. <laughs> You've got like this T-bone shaped I love spaceship it. that has a core that drops down, and that's how you get into it. And it's just like this is completely impractical. I don't buy it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Years later. I remember these mo like these images are like burned into my like the the style of the ships in this. I'm like, I don't like them. Why do I remember them so well? Like somehow, like you know, I mean, like that ship with all the lights, the uh, you know, on the front of it, the windows that are like slashed into it. It's kind of a bulbous thing with the uh, like yeah. the wings coming out of it. <clears throat> It's like I remember these things like years on is like that's a distinct look like that's Dune. That's Dune. That's Dune. That's David Lynch's Dune. The costumes, the hairstyles, it's like all of that is very specific to this movie. So I think he did achieve like a uniqueness in science fiction uh, films of that time. Uh, so on that basis, I'm kind of recommending it. However, I have severe reservations because... I think the second act collapses. And I think the reason why it collapses is because we're not being told the entire story. The editing is telescoping the story so much that it's incomprehensible almost. You know, I mean, again, I, I, I think it's just me. I don't have a problem with a lot of things catching, you know, Lannister and Stark and, you know, who all these <laughs> people are. Or in this, you know, it's like I can pick out, you know, it's like I know what they're talking about. You know, I understand the language <coughs> of this movie. So it was like, I fo I'm following it. I'm like, I know who everybody is. But I grant, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm aware that not <laughs> nobody else is like, you know, uh, picking this stuff up. And I see that that's a problem with the movie. I see that's where I think Villeneuve is going to have his problem, you know, creating that kind of translation. Either you are familiar with the material. And I noticed our commenters who said they had read the book like the movie because it basically does function as a reader's digest condensed version of the book. I mean, it does hit all the beats and the book is there. It's just, uh, you know, <clears throat> that toward the end when they start introducing the sound weapons and, and I think, you know, there's the big battle and there's a lot of stuntmen running around and I'm like, you're not visually selling it in a way that's easily, 
um, you know, understood, I think. You know, it's murky, dark, you know, looking photography. It's like, I don't know, it just kind of deteriorates. There's a romance that, like, is happening just because we have to have a romance. You know, it's like, I don't feel it at all. There's no connection mm. there. It's like, I recognize that Paul has to have a, you know, a wife at some right. point. But there was for, no moment for them. Yeah. It's just like it happened at some point, like in, and as an afterthought. Yeah. So they, they sacrificed that storyline to advance. You know the overthrow of the the emperor. We're going to bring the emperor down and attack him. Okay, well that's where the saga has to end. So we're going to throw out everything else to get to there. And so I think ultimately the whole enterprise collapses under its own weight. And I haven't seen the extended version so many years. I couldn't tell you if that one fixes the problems. It's an extended, extended version. version? Yeah, didn't I tell you it was on TV? They put the oh, they, right. they put it out as a two night thing. Put a bunch of stuff back in. Oh, I remember the boy. opening of the the extended version uses uh, like concept art to explain for like ten minutes. Wow, the story of like what is going on it explains wow. who all. It's like the glossary comes first <laughs> for ten minutes, and then you get into the movie, and it takes out the uh, the princess narrating everything, but it adds in a bunch of scenes, so. It's more of Dune. That was available. On, uh, it was available on DVD at one point. The Alan Smithy cut, uh, which was written by Judas Booth. I'm using air quotes because it's David Lynch's mm-hmm. uh, pseudonym. Also, um, and I think that's like it's fairly valuable now. You can't really find it cheap. The mm. extended version of David Lynch's Dune. I think. Um, you know, obviously, it has a following because I think the story does have a resonance. Uh, just being like one of these kind of mythical, you know, the the Messiah story, the Savior story, the uh, you know, in a science fiction area, you know, the, the uh, a science fiction world which is really well developed, you know, like George R. R. Martin has done with uh, a Song of Ice and Fire. I mean, it's one of those things where you know Herbert thought out like all the different components of this uh, universe. And um, I think, you know, because of all this, the, the novel has endured for, what are we going on, like 50 odd years or something like that. So, I don't know. I, I'm curious about the Villeneuve uh, movie, but I don't think, I think the deck is stacked against him. <laughs> I don't think you can translate this into a two to three hour feature film. I think, you know, Michaela's mm-hmm. idea there, you know, you make this as an eight episode or eight hour movie mm. or, you know, it goes on, you adapt more of the books, you know, mm-hmm. uh, is probably the way to go. Um, I don't know. I think, uh, I would recommend that you check out Dune as a, um, project. No, <laughs> as like an Homer example yeah. of, uh, you know, just, a, a, a bizarre and odd relic of, mm. you know, this period in science fiction right. filmmaking. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's my wrap up on doing that's, uh, two and a half gom jabars of four. I don't know what a gom jabar is. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yep. That was the little, uh, that was don't the know. needle that she put at the back of his neck. Oh. So this is the gom jabar. Oh. There you go. Yep. Okay. That was my shot. At it. <laughs> Next week, Sean's going to pick the movie. Yep. Sean, what are we watching? Metal Storm, Metal Storm. We're not watching Metal Storm, you you son of a bitch. Uh, we are going to watch Jennifer Aniston and Warwick Davis <gasps> in Leprechaun. Yes! Shut up. Yes. yes. Is St. Patrick's right. Day coming up? It's coming up. up. All right, then. Got to pick it. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, ladies and germs. And until then, the basement is going dark.